we are writing is half without this sign, but we are still we are reading is half. But I think in Urdu we didn't yeah. we change the the writing. We put yeah. a and and half. Half. Okay. Okay. Yeah, th this is another way that people they right. write it. Right. right. Yeah. But this is uh, completely Urdu style. That's right. Yeah. Okay. The Arabic style of writing name is half is this one. If you mm. see in the Quran, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the name of Ishaq is written in this way. Right? Mm. So this is Arabic style. Mm. But with the short alif. Oh, okay. The short alif in the Quran it has to be there because this is a religious text. Okay, and it is uh, assumed that people they can make mistake if they do not know this rule. That's why. Otherwise, if you are reading any other, for example, this book, maybe you will see the name is Haq in this book, but it will not be with this sign. Okay, so all these things uh, we learn after uh, knowing this alif. Okay, yes. Uh, you just said about the maktab, uh, the meaning of maktab you said is the desk or the office. office no. But I heard somewhere that it also has a meaning of place to learn, like a school. Like is mm -hmm. like <laughs> it is again in Urdu. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, it has been used in Urdu more for that meaning of the place of learning. Right. You're right. And especially like elementary level or... Uh, <laughs> very early education right, exactly. they use it maktab so that is but Arab people they do not use maktab for that meaning okay. they have other words for that like ma'had they say ma'had ma ma al madrasa al mm -hmm. yes so we have different uh, words so when um, we have so many words of Arabic in Urdu and we have kind of uh, different use also different context but that's good that you know Urdu and Arabic, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so at least. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Um, at this stage where we are, is it good practice to, when we do our homework, to uh, do the markings on the words and the text? You know, or is it a must, or we don't have to, or what's the... Okay. I think uh, we covered that area in the last classes. Mm -hmm. In the beginning classes, if you remember, we talked about the marking. Right. And I will uh, come back to that in a minute, inshallah, after drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to drink some water. So we have one minute to break, so let's... <laughs> One more clarification about the timing also. Our class time in the month of October is 5.30 to 7. Okay, now today we had a prayer at 5.30. Next Sunday also we have at 5.30. That will be the last Sunday. After that we have a sir at 5.15 before the class. So we will start inshallah the class right at 5.30. Okay? And then we will uh, keep the track. Of the time. The last four way you can have and mm -hmm. from November 4th, when the daylight saving time will end, then we have the class at from 4 p.m. So make your plans schedule from now. So there will be no confusion. Uh, you make yourself available from the month of November at 4 p.m. for this class. So then it will be from 4 to 5.30. Same 90 hours. But the timing will be changed from 4 to 5.30. Okay? You said 90 hours, 90 minutes. 90 minutes, I said 90 hours, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll be killing myself. <laughs> okay. Probably I forget about that, but uh, right now I just remember, I'm looking at that. We have a very good program in our masjid, Frisco Masjid, on coming Saturday, on October 13. It's a very qualified man. He is a PhD and a graduate of Harvard University. His name is Dr. Dirk. Okay. So he is coming over here and he will be doing a workshop, a training workshop, how to present Islam in a nice way. And this is the need of the hour, this is the need of the time. To your co-workers, to your neighbors, 
in a, in a most professional way, friendly way. So he has a lot of experience. Again, this man, he converted to Islam many years ago and then he went himself to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And he learned Islam from there. So he has both of the you know, educations and knowledge. Very learned man and very experienced man. So he will be coming to our masjid. And there is a website address on this postcard. So inshallah when you, Brother Kanishka, just uh, distribute this. Take this card with you and you can register yourself on this website. And I highly encourage everyone to attend this class. It will be very much, you know, beneficial. It's known as Outreach 101 class. Do you know how long the class is? Yes, from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. It is seven hours. But your registration for the class will be including lunch. So this organization will provide you lunch also right here. Okay. So you don't need to go outside for that. Mm -hmm. So we come. Yeah, then you will come, right? Will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and when we are talking about the lunch, I also <laughs> uh, remember one thing. It has reminded me, our brother Hassan, MashaAllah, may Allah bless you. Being very nice, as the first day of the class, he brought some sweets for you. So inshallah, you can take your share while you will be going home. And he told me that his aunt, she was here, she passed away recently. So make a dua for her that may Allah give her makhfira. And the benefit of this class will be the other side. This is the second program that will be in November. It says Waves of Unity. Waves of Unity is a program that will be held at American Center, Airline Center, and it will be the uh, friendly, you know, relations among Muslims and Christians, okay? Mm -hmm. Mostly the Christians, but every people of any faith. So there will be meeting around like uh, thousands of people, not hundreds, thousands of people, inshallah, they will be coming. So you will be interacting actually with each other and very renowned scholars they are coming in this program like Hamza Yusuf, mm -hmm. Imam Zaid Shakir and also Professor John Esposito. Professor John Esposito is a professor in Georgetown University in Washington DC and he is an Islamic scholar. He has written so many books. Though, though he is the Christian himself but he is has very extensive research on Islam and he has written so many books. So he will be one of the speakers. So you will be getting an opportunity to listen to him and to listen to all other scholars. Mm -hmm. And after getting the class over here in our masjid, you will get a certificate that will qualify you to go to this program. Okay. <laughs> okay. Having said that, now we are going to this book. And the first lesson, I think we have more books uh, with more people. This one or no? Again? <laughs> okay. So, so on that day, will be excuse for the class? For Arabic class? Yeah. No, it's this class on Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Yes, it Saturday, Saturday. It's not clashing with Arabic. It's no, 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 November 11 is Sunday. Oh, 11 is Sunday? Okay. Then, yeah. uh, what yeah. is the time for that? 2, two, 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 two to 10. 10. 2 to 10? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then you will talk about that. <laughs> so, this is dars number, you know, one, or awal. The topic of that, Ana Sakina Fi Madinat, New York. Ana Sakina Fi Madinat, New York. I live in the city of New York. Yes, please give it to us. So, brother, you have it? Some you can share? Okay. Just one book over there? Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Let me give you one. I think I have an extra one. Mm -hmm. Okay, Greg, I have this one for these three brothers. 
and you three brothers can share in this one and then you okay so now everyone knows the meaning of this part anasakina fi maninat you are yeah what is that sister i live in the city of new york now who is saying that a man or a woman 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 how do you know that the woman saying that tamarbuta right the word sakina has this tamarbuta see because of this feminine marker you understood it if a man would be saying how the man would say sakin sakin if we move tamarbuta it become a man and a sakin right Yeah. there will be no any other chain just in this word in this book every uh, unit in the beginning has a vocabulary okay in this vocabulary you will learn the new words and then you will be asked to make sentences okay so we will just go quickly for a uh, few words on the first page Now, those sisters cannot share, right? Okay, you know what? Let me give you my book, and I will share with the brothers over here. Just look at the first page. Okay. Okay. What What is the first word in the vocabulary section? al adab al adab okay can you all look at that word al adab al adab okay again now look at the difference between classical arabic and modern arabic here adab as we have been using or uh, learning for all our life it is like respect hmm? Hmm. etiquette manners hmm. so that meaning is there no doubt about that but in standard arabic adab means also literature okay. so if you are reading the literature of any language american literature french english literature whatever so that is called al adab yes in our in urdu also uh, uh, all the departments for the adabiyat they are for the literature yes so uh, this you know humanities you know department arts and humanities that is also called adab so what are you required to make a sentence of this word adab you can say i study arabic literature hmm? and you convert into arabic you can say i love arabic literature i like arabic literature right mm -hmm. this another you know option mm -hmm. for you so whatever way you want to make just make a sentence can someone make i study arabic literature um adres al adab al arabiya there is so al adab arabiya okay omar ana uhibbu al adab al arabiya okay any sister <laughs> yeah, they are very good. The sentence, the same one. You can say "ana adrus." "Ana hmm? adrus." "Adrus" means I study. "Ana adrus al adab al Arabi." "Adab al Arabi." And he said "ana ohib." "Ohib" means I like. Right. So you can replace just just the verb. Everything else will be same. And. uh this is uh, for the first person it's a very good thing in arabic it is common either a man say i like or i study it will be same or a woman say it will be same ana adrus or ana uhib so looks like hard at this time right if i give you the one word and i ask you on the spot that make a sentence right it looks hard but now i'm making easy for you when you buy the book it comes with a dvd okay mm -hmm. so this dvd is also cd and dvd both audio and video so if you just put 
like I put here in my laptop and listen to that. So you will listen a sentence over here and Did you listen that? Al Adab al Isbani. Al Isbani. He said Al Isbani. What is your guess, Al Isbani sisters? Al Isbani. Huh. Spanish. 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 Yeah. So Spanish is Isbani. Now you can change Al Isbani with any other. If you wanna say Al Islami, mm -hmm. Al Adab al Islami. Mm -hmm. Adrus ala double Islami, right? Mm -hmm. Adrus ala double Amriki. Amriki. Mm. Adrus al Adabal Ferenci. Ferenci. French, right? Mm -hmm. Almani. Almani, yes. Almani. <laughs> ah, German. Right. So if you put this DVD that will come with the book, then you will listen the whole sentence. So it will help you how to make the sentence. Now, what is the next word? Wallahi. Wallahi. Second one is Wallahi. Okay. Wallahi. This is a use. It depends on the context. It has two meanings. One is you see or hear Arab people saying when they talk, Wallahi, Wallahi, right? They say a lot, Wallahi. So they want to say actually, I swear by God, right? Swear to God, or I swear by Allah, when you are emphasizing on that something. This is one meaning of a lie. But here in the another context, this context is like you are informing someone, oh, you know, I got a nice car today. Right? And your friend saying, Wallahi, really? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So the same context, they say, really? In that meaning also, we use the word Wallahi. Now, Is it proper you are, to use that word that way, though? Because what? if you're you're technically swearing by Allah, right? Uh -huh. But is that okay for you to be throwing that word around like oh, that? Oh, no, you are asking me from religious point yeah, of view. Yeah, because I don't think... <laughs> now, she's <laughs> asking a question to the imam. <laughs> okay. If we are not allowed to use wallahi a lot, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it is a qasam, it is an oath. And it's an oath taking the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we must respect. Right? Mm -hmm. We are allowed only to use Wallahi if we really mean it and if there is a need for that. If there is a need for that. We should not make it as uh, just <laughs> right whenever we want to make it. Yes. No, from religious point of view, it is not good to use. But for that meaning, you can use it. For really, right? Mm -hmm. Wallahi, really. Because that. Everything, you know, your actions depend on your intention. Innam al-amalu bin niyat. So over here, wallahi, you are not using for swearing by Allah. You are using just to give the expression of really. And things change depending on the context. So over here, the context is the cultural use. It's the cultural use, not the religious use. Yes. Uh, in, in Lebanon, I think they say wallahu. Is that right? Instead of wallahu. Uh huh. That okay. is the slang it's or the same yes, yes, colloquial. Hmm. So now, the sentence for this use in DVD that you are going to listen now, the man says, "I do not have any class today." Okay, ma in the fasl al yom. I do not have a class today. <coughs> and everyone is happy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the, his friend is asking, "Wallahi, really?" So he used this word wallahi in that context. And you can make a sentence. When you go home, your wife tells that she cooked a chicken for you today. And he says, wallahi. <laughs> <laughs> you are happy with that. I don't know you like it or not. <laughs> okay, so listen it. Adrus al adab al isbani. That was the first one. Alhamdulillah. 
ما عندي فصل اليوم والله بناية الأمم المتحدة في نيويورك كبيرة This was the third one. What is the word? Al-Umam al-Muttahida. You need little practice of saying that. It's a combination of two words. Say first Al-Umam. It's easy, right? Al-Umam. The second Al-Muttahida. Al-Muttahida. Al-Umam is nations. Is the plural hmm? nations? Hmm. Ah, plural from what? Very good question. What is your guess? Let me ask. Ummah. 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 Yes. The word ummah. We always say Muslim ummah, right? <laughs> so singular is ummah. Again, I need to use the other. <laughs> Umma. This is singular. So it's one nation, like one country. So we have a religious context, Umma, as the people of the same, you know, nation or same um, religion. And one is the modern, uh, you know, our use of the word Umma is nation, one country. The plural of umam. Okay. Mm -hmm. When we add al, that is the definite article in Arabic, we say al umam. Right? Nations. Then the second word is al muttaheda. Muttaheda means united. United. It's from ittihad. The root word of ittihad is wahd. So wahda. So wahid, wahid, tawhid. It's all from the same root. So muttahida means united. So united nations, they are called in Arabic al-umamul muttahida. So you need to make a sentence with this word al-umamul muttahida and what you have heard? Do someone remember? Okay. You are translating what say in Arabic. <laughs> okay. Someone else? Okay. What is the word for building? Binaya. Binaya. Okay. So Binaya is building. Al Umamil Muttahida. So the building of United Nations or United Nations building. Fi New York. In New York, Kabira. Big. Okay, uh, let me write the word Kabira. No, what's building? Binaya. Binaya. I will write Binaya as well. This is the word Binaya for building. Okay. So Binaya al Umamil Muttahida Kabira. Is it from Baid? Binaya, is it from Ba? Ba? I mean from Bait. No, 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 it's not from Bait. It's not from Bait. It's a noon. Noon, yes. Ba, noon, alif. Ya and tamarbuta. Binaya. So, Sister Sadia, this word should be feminine gender or masculine gender? Feminine. How do you know that? The ending. Ending with the tamarbuta. Now, since the word binaya is feminine gender, this is a noun, and the kabira is going to be the adjective. Okay? So, this is also another uh, grammar rule, Arabic grammar rule, that noun and adjectives, they have to be agreed. They come in agreement. Masculine with masculine, feminine with feminine. So today I just gave you this uh, big picture of the vocabulary and how to use it, how to make sentences. Okay? This is uh, like a training. And if we are really, we would like to learn Arabic, vocabulary is the backbone. The more vocabulary you know, the more you are able to use that vocabulary, 
in writing, in speaking, you are successful. You learn the language fast, right? So pay attention to all these vocabulary words. They are all there. And I'm giving you only those words. They are on this first page. Starting from Al Adab. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Only nine words. Hmm? So, hmm? by next class, hmm. try to make these nine sentences. Is it hard? Yes. Yes. Okay. How many then? How many? Five. Five. Okay. Fair deal. Okay, let's do five. First five words. Hmm? And I understand that most of you do not have the book also, so you need to wait for uh, the book. So, but you got the idea. You will listen to the DVD and you can make the sentences. But at this stage, uh, understanding the meaning and perhaps remembering the meaning is all very well, but making a full and correct sentence may be very difficult. So I said, make with all the mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> small, you make small sentences, maybe two, three words. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, two, three words. But try, start making, you all know, right. sentences. Right? Because the, the first day will be already done. Mm -hmm. Last semester. And this time we are making uh, those, uh, you know, next level. Or... Uh, Yes, Greg. Oh, no, I was okay. just scratching. Okay. <laughs> any, any question or anything? I'm not, um, I'm not trying to make things harder, right? If at this time you all decide you are not going to make, le let's leave it, okay? <laughs> I can give you some more time. Two weeks' time, for example. Maybe we will start after two weeks. No problem. Right? But ultimately, we have to come back on the track. <laughs> Because we are going to learn Arabic. Right? Inshallah. So, this just need a little bit, you know, commitment. You need to spend some time. And if, mashallah, one more advice. From today, you make your buddies. Okay? Your uh, Arabic buddy. Hmm? <laughs> so, exchange the numbers, phone numbers or email with each other. And work together. Work together. It, it will help you a lot and it will keep your interest also right going keep moving like if you are stuck somewhere maybe the second person will help you he will push you and then you are again on on the track so it is very good you know advice that make your buddies sister they can make uh, your buddies however if you are husband wife here do not be buddy in that one. <laughs> yes I, I noticed one thing. If you go in, in uh, Microsoft Word, mm -hmm. you set up a translation there. Mm -hmm. You can write in English and then just highlight it. It will give you the translation in Arabic. Yes. Oh, he so he the, needs that one. <laughs> so, so, so that would be very good. You, know, you can just do whatever you want to type and you can read it how they are translating. Yes. It's better than Google. No, but they do it literally. Yeah, so yeah it Google was wrong. Mm. Uh, even wrong and at least you can get some help. So Microsoft Word is that? Word. Yeah. Okay. Better than Google. I don't know better than Arabic or not, but <laughs> better than Google. Huh? Twenty ten. Yeah. Or the easy one, other one is Google Translate, right? Everyone knows it. Google Translate. Go to that and choose from English to Arabic. So type your English sentence and right away it will give you the Arabic. <laughs> Yeah, you will do you know, and, 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 and then you can also get the uh, Arabic keyboard. But yeah, yeah. why I am, you know, uh, pushing too much or emphasizing on that, you need to start somewhere, right? Yeah. If you do not start thinking, no, 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 I am not, I cannot do it at this level, you know. I need more time, I need more time and it will never come. <laughs> so start, inshallah. By helping this Google Translate or this DVD or whatever, but uh, be in there, be in the field, right? If we are watching the game, 
from uh, outside, we cannot play. For playing, we have to be in the middle of the field. Okay. So, uh, this is the second thing. And now we are uh, getting closer to Maghrib prayer time also. I will use only five minutes today for that colloquial. For, so that you can get an idea as the first day of the class that what does it look like. Or what does it sound like. <laughs> By the way, this uh, DVD that will come, where, where is the book? Can I get my both books or one book? Yeah, second book is over here. Jazakallah khair. Where is my other book? Okay. <laughs> this is the DVD that it will come with this book. Okay. So you will get a lot of uh, things. It has a DVD also, you know, dialogue. You can listen Arabic dialogue and conversation in this book. So you are going to learn a lot, inshallah, believe me. Okay, now coming to the third one. Now I will take a rest and let Dr. Primsler talk to you. <laughs> right? So this is just a CD. Even you can put in your car. You are driving the car and you are you know, listening to him. And it's a very another good thing. You do not have to sit on the desk. You do not need to spend a specific time for that. Whenever you are going, you know, walking, you can listen. You can driving the car and the best time that you can drive, you so, so many hours we drive, right? We are going to work, we are going to market, and we just put this DVD in the car and just listen. Your language is hard in the beginning, but uh, once you conquer that wall, mm. it becomes easy. <laughs> Why I say this? I speak Chinese. <laughs> I, I went to China and, and there I different. Right? And I went to class after seven or eight months. I can speak and write. Yeah, no, not beyond the thousands. Thousands and thousands. 
Congratulations. You have just purchased the most effective language program ever developed. This is Unit 1 of Pinsler's Arabic 1. Listen to this Arabic conversation. Afwan, in the talk English? No, I don't know English. I don't know a little bit of Arabic. Are you American? Yes, I'm American. In the next few minutes, you'll learn not only to understand this conversation, but to take part in it yourself. Imagine an American man sitting next to a Syrian woman in someone's home. He wants to begin a conversation, so he says, excuse me, Afwan. The Arabic speaker is going to repeat this part by part, starting from the end. You are to repeat each part after him, trying to make your pronunciation sound exactly like his. Be sure you repeat aloud. One. Now you say one. 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 Af. 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 one. Af one. Put it together. Af one. Af one. The sound af at the beginning of af one is very common in the Arabic language. Listen and repeat after the speaker, trying to match his pronunciation. Af one. Af one. How do you say excuse me in Arabic? This will be the way that you will be learning the Arabic word. He will break down, make it easy for you. This one, af one, so he said say one. Now everyone can say one, right? Then af. Now you are able to say af, then put it together. Of one, and you learn a Arabic word how to say excuse me in Arabic, right? So, in this way, you will learn speaking Arabic. So, we are uh, concluding the class for today, inshallah, over here. And, sister, can you please take and distribute?